Listen right here. Woo. You better get out your recording device because you cannot keep up with the pen and pencil. I'm going to tell you that right now. You cannot. So, um, of course, she's Dr. AK. She does, every, she does things so, so different. So that's how, that, and that's the thing about us, diversity in our urban community. You know what I'm saying? This is who I go to when I need some backup on a particular subject. Really who I go to, I need some front up on a, a particular subject. Not the backup, but the front up. I should have called Acacia first, right? Um, man, her, ooh, let's just get, it, get the party started. They are going to come on and get us with some sounds music first. So welcome, AK. <laughs> Louder. realms and we are going to be honoring his research today but before we get underway uh, something came to me on my drive here that it's been a rough time period for all of us we've all had some sort of loss or transformation or transition that's been difficult on our minds and I really wish to raise the vibration immediately before we go into talking about the technicalities of the interdimensional realm, let us demonstrate how sound can travel and sound can heal. So I would like to introduce someone who I met just yesterday uh, in totality, um, the Honorable Julie Baron, M.A., and Mama Spirit Traveler, who has been my mentor and teacher, and uh, I am very honored to say uh, I'm so grateful that she has been in my life to share her wisdoms and knowledge with me as well. And we're going to sing a quick little mantra to wake everybody up and to put your hearts in the right spot uh, so that you can receive after we have poured from our cups that are already overflowing into the cups of everyone in this room. Are you guys ready? So Julie is going to start. This is called Please Bring Positivity. And this is a song that you can sing along to. It's a very short song, but it's very powerful. It was very profound to listen to last night. We're just going to prime the atmosphere with the vibration of love. Are you ready? I'm ready. All right. Okay. So this is a little bit of, can you guys hear me okay? Okay. It's a little bit of uh, It's a call and response, um, and so I'm going to do it at the beginning, and then these guys are going to kind of mirror that, and then we'll have everybody come in, okay? So here's kind of the, the words and the melody. Please bring, please bring positivity, positivity into my life, into my life every day, every day. Please bring, please. Positivity, positivity into my life, into my life every day, every day. Okay, back to the beginning. Please bring. Positivity, positivity into my life, into my life every day, every day. Please bring, please bring positivity, positivity into my life, into my life every day, every day. time.
going to play a very short clip of a song to change the vibration and harmony of the atmosphere. This is something that we call a primer, okay? This is how your consciousness can prepare to receive a message that is serious. Baba Kalindi, E, the great Ahati Kalindi E, is a warrior priest. And his message has touched the lives of us all. So I would like us to take a moment of silence to individually give thanks for the message that he has been able to instill in all of us. So I would like us all to just give a one moment of gratitude to the great Ahati Kalindi E. He is the reason why we are here in this building today. He is the reason why I myself have the ability to appear and stand before you. Because he inspired me from the very beginning of my journey and continues to inspire me every day. He continues to bring positivity in the form of lessons, in the form of wisdoms that I am always constantly unraveling, looking deeper into self, looking internally for answers to quote him directly. As a mentor of mine in this work, I have never forgotten how deep it is for someone to take the time and patience knowing where you are at and pour into your cup unconditionally without judgment, without animosity, without showing off. Someone who has traveled through light years of time and space who has trillions of years of experience in other lifetimes doing what I was just starting out as, spent time with me and listened to every single one of my trip reports and took them as seriously as his own. And I give thanks. We give thanks to you, Baba Kurundi, for your time. We give thanks to you for your sacrifice. We give thanks to you for your understanding. We give thanks to you for your wisdom. We give thanks to you for all that you have shared with us, and we will not forget. We will continue the work. We will continue the work remembering you. We will continue the work expanding and evolving our consciousnesses individually, and we will continue the work that was written to be, so that we may all evolve in a way. We give thanks. So, all right. Is everybody ready to receive the lecture today? Is everybody awake? Is everybody excited? Yes. Is everybody passionate about the work that we do in our communities and for our loved ones? Yes. Ashe, Ashe, Ashe O. Wait. Today's lecture is one of my favorite subjects. Wait, wait. Also one of Baba's favorite subjects. Yes. Go ahead. This song. Does anyone have a C charger cord? Yeah, I need that. And if you took the one that was up here, you're really interfering with like everything because as soon as my battery dies because somebody took the cord, then the, 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 the Wi-Fi is gonna go down. So we need the cord back. Or I can borrow someone for uh, Android. So it looks like we raised the vibration to a point that broke the speakers for a moment. All right. Thank you, OE. All right. So, expanding quantum awareness, subparticle research in the hyperdimensional realms. The topic of this lecture is a collection of observations that I've made in my time speaking to Baba Kalindi as a friend, 
and as a mentor, things that he has inspired me to study in self-inquiry when it comes to exploring the tool of research, of consciousness that the psilocybin mushroom is, as well as the medicinal value for healing. Expanding quantum awareness. All right. So the slides are, aren't exactly going to be moving and turn, but the visual uh, representations will be available. But I just wanted to go ahead and start off by saying, has anyone gotten a chance to really observe the Palantir Stone that is sitting here? This Palantir Stone um, has been brought back to us, back to our community. This stone has always belonged to our community in the hyperdimensional realms. And the first place that we discovered this stone was the hyperdimensional village. Most of the time that I spent doing research in the mushroom realms, was in the hyperdimensional village that Baba Kalindi spoke about. This is a place um, that is accessible above five grams. Baba Kalindi would suggest that we started at three, five, seven, nine, but that we continue beyond once we were able to become sovereign and stand in our power. And he taught me what that meant by leading by example. What does it mean to go into the unknown without fear? What does it mean to go to a place and meet other people whose higher selves also reside in that realm? What does it mean to be divine family and what does it mean to be quantumly entangled? A lot of these words flew over my head for the first few years of my studies. A lot of these words I could not define because I had not had any experience through which to quantify their meaning yet. He was extraordinarily patient with me though. He knew that an astrophysicist, that's my background, I graduated high school when I was a preteen and I went on to pursue a degree in astrophysics and geology when I was in my teens. During that time, I encountered the sacred mushroom and Baba Kalendi's work. From that time, I have had the honor of being able to study under one of the world's leading advancers of consciousness and I would like to share more of why. The Palantir Stone has a consciousness within it, a consciousness that doesn't exist in just this reality. The reason that we can say this is because when we look at quantum particles, a lot of the word of quantum gets lost on folks. The word quantum just means discrete packets of information that are being shared Part of us singing to you this morning was sending packets of energy into this room, charged molecules with energetic signatures that are unique to Mama Spirit Traveler, myself, and Mama Julie Barone. The reason why we did this is because it's easier oftentimes to observe a demonstration of a quantum process taking place than to theorize it. It's not meant to be thought about. It's meant to be experienced. And you take from the experiential knowledge something that you can thereby share with others. A lot of the time when we go into the mushroom realm, we have difficulty seeing how it relates to our five sense reality. But part of that is the lack of understanding of what we ourselves are composed of materially and spiritually, as well as what the universe and the fabric of space and time is composed of, okay? So when we look at the human body, we're made of 99% air, empty space. That 1%, the entire universe could fit in the size of an apple. Think about that for a moment. When we go and we take the mushroom, a lot of times you'll notice that what you have think been thinking about for months, traumas, experiences in the past, will come up for you out of that quote unquote empty space. Something that you thought you had gotten over completely will arise for you in the experience and be revealed to you in a different light, sometimes positively, sometimes it can be perceived as negatively. But the bridge between material and spiritual still exists in the mushroom to be able to show you how everything that is material also relates to the spiritual. But the spiritual is quantum. If we look at a molecule 
of energy. The ancients also had these representations. Could you please move the slide? Thank you. Slide that way so I can see the Okay. All right. I'm going to show you a few representations. Go to the next slide. They may be medicines, but the primary utilization Oops. is to explore consciousness. This is the Palantir stone. Okay? When we look at the different lectures that Baba Kalindi has given us information about, over the past two years in particular, there have been a series of live streams where he has been speaking to those of us who have gone into the multiverse to explore the quantum spiritual aspects of consciousness. He would use terms like the interdimensional village very often and very fondly. He would use terms like the hyperdimensional realm uh, where, where you can go and then see things like the alien predator racing after each other. He told us that in Black Panther, the movie Wakanda was based on a real thing. The Wakandan technology or the hyperdimensional technology that exists was actually connected to the human body and the human interface. The same abilities that were just uh, distinguished, the animal powers, the Black Panther, the Jaguar energy, all of these things have been shown to us by ancient civilizations throughout space and time. Whether we look at the Shavin, who had the Jaguar deities, the Jaguar-faced cactus deities, they would go and take the cactus and the mushroom together. Sometimes they would even use enemas made of gourds so that they could uh, imbue the, the, the toad poison and make a drink called falke. Sometimes it was administered orally, sometimes it was smoked, sometimes it was administered as an enema, so that the ancients could go and explore these hyperdimensional realms. Somebody brought up to me a good point, I think it was a few years ago. They said, how on earth is it possible that the mushroom is the oldest entheogenic technology that we have, that the ancients used, but we're not seeing the same things that the ancients saw? That's incorrect. Because Baba Kalindi's legacy is not a five gram legacy. Baba Kalindi's legacy is an indigenous dose legacy. And when I say indigenous dose, I am directly referring to Maria Sabina, who gave dosages that would be felt in the eight to 10 gram range of experience with the mushroom before it was brought back to the United States and sold to the population as a recreational drug. The ancient technique of taking the mushroom is taking it in a dose to get full. When you were on the sub-Saharan plains of Africa, Baba Kalindi would inspire us to go look back at our human evolution, our walk through time. The first Homo sapiens, Homo erectus, on the plains of, of the sub-Saharan Africa, looking at a mushroom the size of a dinner plate and seeing it as food. What other technology, is what I asked myself, was around during that time? because the signature of the mushroom in the indigenous hills of Oaxaca, where I spent most of last year studying the San Jose del Pacifico psilocybin zacatecora mushroom, the darum mushroom, which was one of Baba's favorite mushrooms to consume, I wanted to know why it was so different than the mushroom that we experience here at home in the States. The reason that I found in my research studies was because it still had access to the database of information that was quantumly embedded in the soil of the hills of Oaxaca. These soils are highly conductive soils that contain lots of fulvic acid. Anyone ever heard, heard of shilajit? Raise your hand. Okay, so what is shilajit made of primarily? It's made of fulvic acid. That's the decomposing remains of leaves and other uh, different organic substances that has become extremely nutrient dense. This nutrient-dense nature feeds the mushroom all of those sub-micronutrients your brain and your body needs to be able to handle and remember high-dose experiences. The mushroom in Oaxaca is also almost twice as strong, and it's also consumed traditionally fresh or in honey or in tea, because when it is fresh, the nutrients of the mushroom are still preserved. When we dry the mushroom out, drying came as a technology after after the first mushrooms were eaten in the sub-Saharan plains of Africa, after uh, the civilization had, had already uh, come together and decided that we're gonna make a presto dehydro, or we're gonna put it on a rock, and we're gonna wait for it to bake, but then it's less potent, so, you know, it wasn't as good. A lot of the times, I noticed that there were indigenous representations, a quantum 
breadcrumb trail of information that the ancients left behind about who they were and what they did. But there's a lot of primer missing. And primer is something that you don't really get. It's like a cipher, a way to translate the different hierarchical languages of the secret systems of what the ancients did. And this is what a lot of Baba taught. Baba taught a lot of esoteric knowledge and research. Some of the people in this room are students of the descendant lineage of Yogananda. Some of the people in this room are descendants and, and, and devotees um, of Sheikh Ahmed Dubamba's uh, uh, Sheikh Becho. Some of those people are in this room right now with you and who were students of Baba Kalindi. And when we would go into the multiverse together, we would discuss these things. When I say go into the multiverse together, what I am saying is there were group sojourns. Baba would say, okay, you know, go in, take your 15 grams, and then go to the hyperdimensional village and come back with the information. We'd bring it back and we'd share it amongst each other. There were captains, there were generals, there were officers, because we knew that people in our community, certain people with heart conditions and liver conditions and kidney conditions, could not go in. So we shared the information that we brought back using Baba Kalendi's techniques, eating 10 grams every time Baba would give a lecture, and going in and connecting with what he saw and seeing it firsthand for ourselves to verify it as truth and then bring it back and then share it with the folks who could not go in to see it for themselves. We were also able to use the mushroom technology with vitamins and minerals, but we noticed that after a certain point, we started getting exhausted. We started getting tired. Our body started to break down. We started talking about body load. Our stomachs hurt. Our backs hurt. Why are we so sore? And that's when I had to go into the science of why the indigenous mushroom from San Jose del Pacifico or the indigenous mushroom in Costa Rica or other indigenous mushrooms that grow in local communities like Angkor Wat that have a technology that is different than what is grown in the United States. It's simply because you're not able to get the same amount of micronutrients from a mushroom that is dried and grown on rye grain than you are to get from a mushroom that has been grown on a fulvic acid rich soil, struck by lightning, and also interfacing actively with the technology that the ancients still used. When you look at San Jose, uh, San Jose del Pacifico, you'll notice that it's a very beautiful place. It has a very tall mountain, but until you've spent maybe a couple of months there, you won't realize that there are ancient ruins that nobody in the town knows where they came from. It's like an alien put it up there. There's a 16 foot tall by 33 foot wide round stone at the top of San Jose del Pacifico's Azola Tepec Mountain. I lived on the side of that mountain range. I would walk 12 miles a day, barefoot, sometimes in high winds and rain, to go up to that sacred site and commune with the sacred altar that had mushrooms all over it. This is what the indigenous Mazateca people still use today as a sacramental place to give honor to their ancestors and to take the mushroom to interface with the technology face to face. But actually living there and seeing that, I had to come back to the United States and think, so why are we having side effects? It's because there are certain nutrients that you get on the sub-Saharan plain of Africa. The diet was completely primordial. If you were out foraging for a mushroom, that means that you picked up the rock that the mushroom grew out from under and ate some grubs too. It meant you ate some ants too. If you look at a gorilla in the wild, everybody thinks, okay, how can a gorilla be vegetarian and still be powerful, and still have huge muscles and a, uh, a jaw-clenching force of 1,400 pounds, how can this creature do this? It's just a, it's a, just a signature? Baba taught us, and, uh, oh, you could you go ahead and scroll the slide, please? Go, keep, keep going a little bit. Keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. I wanted to show you a magazine that came out in 1994, a year before I was born. Stop here. Animals adhere to the nature of its kind and naturalness of its own being, so its combat was inbred and naturally spontaneous. Every organ is thought to have contained an animal spirit. And you could do a dance or perform an ancient QR code or an ancient uh, a representation of the animal to absorb its animal power. And 
is believed that even though there are thousands of different species, the human has evolved up through, we can still access their intelligence and the spot where they left off in their evolution and continue our evolution beyond that. So if we're going to do what the ancients did, let's do it right. I need to find a way to help people in my community who are suffering from severe anxiety and depression from being bent over at a computer desk all day long and then go and taking their sacramental mushroom and wondering why they had a terrible experience, why they could barely see straight, why they could barely walk the next day, why they were having certain kind of issues in the human body that were not conducive to them having a good experience. And I realized something very integral when I read this magazine that Baba was featured in. I realized that there is a vast amount of information that was considered kept secret. Even in ancient Kemet, there was a Kemetic language, and then there was the priest language. And if you read the priest language, the hieroglyphics to someone who was fluent in Egyptian hieroglyphics, unless they worked with the mushroom or the technology through which to view and actually unravel the scenery that was taking place in the hieroglyphic because it was visually active, the hieroglyph would then turn into a movie. You'd be watching the hieroglyph and then all of a sudden it would start scrolling from left to right and then you'd be able to see real time yourself in the shoes of the priest or the Neturu in ancient Kemet performing the task or embalming the pharaoh and whatnot. But without the technology to translate it, it was deaf and mute and dumb. I know there's some of you in this room who have looked at this and said, wow, it's a pretty rock. This stone contains one of the highest levels of intelligence in the universe. Baba spent years asking for donations from the community of seers and oracles and the teams that he sent in to the multiverse to go and help find and procure this specimen. This stone is billions of years old. And he told us in his lectures before he passed that this stone will wake up one day. This stone is awake now. And I can tell you how I know. I took Baba's instructions very seriously. I waited 11 years to have a moment to sit before that stone. But I can tell you that eight years ago, I had a vision of the same stone in the hyperdimensional realms, and he had the same vision as well. Same with all the other seers who helped him to procure it and find the location so we could bring it back into our possession as a community, because we need it. We need the assistance of the spirits. The quantum intelligence of the stones is real. If you are a conscious being that has been locked in rock strata for 10 billion years, 10 billion, absorbing the energy of every super civilization that has ever walked the earth. In our short time on this planet, cannabis is, is 38 million years old. Who knew that? 30, 38 million years old, that one plant. This stone is several billion. The ancients respected the knowledge and wisdom that came from the stones. Many of us sit stones on our stomachs and on our foreheads, and we think that we're interfacing with something when we're absorbing the after effect of what is actually produced by the frequency of the stone. The stone has an ancient voice. A lot of the languages that cannot be interpreted that Sheikh Amadou Bamba wrote about in the Hasais, the poetry um, of Serene Salyu, Sheikh Amadou Bamba from Senegal, these words of power were written in a crystalline language. Many people have gone to the multiverse and pulled back crystalline language light codes that look very different from today's modern language because they interface with your consciousness in a different way. They contain information. They're information dense. And when we speak to one another, our voices are information dense. That means that whatever we have gone and we have seen, when we speak the words of power, the words of power come through in such a way that you won't even know that you're understanding until later on down the line when you get the download because it was a quantum exchange. When I smile at somebody in this room, I've smiled, I've given hugs, I've, I've embraced people because that's what we do as a community. We interact. The human technology that we are, that we should be honored to have as a vehicle, has been very limited lately 
through the use of masks and separation, but we have come together as in a group successfully. And I want to thank you all for that act of bravery to come here and experience this. Because you're experiencing each other. You're experiencing what it is to interface with other people who have gone into the unknown and brought back information just as you have, and you know that they are powerful beings and you respect one another. You respect each other's sacred systems, you respect each other's sacred languages, and you're able to observe and then bring back from the interaction with another person a wide array of experiences that they may have just had in their trip, didn't even talk to you about. Next time you take your mushroom, you see who they really were to you. You see that they were your father, your mother, your sister, your brother in another lifetime. And that the act of friendship that occurred was not merely coincidental, but in your trip, you'll see them as you saw them 10,000 years ago or 5,000 years ago. But you gotta take the dosage in order to get into the realms that allow you to see. Because when we take sub-threshold doses, here's what happens with five grams of mushrooms. And I'm gonna be very frank. I want you all to be prepared because I've taken five grams of mushrooms more than I've eaten cake in my life. <laughs> I've died thousands of different ways and I can tell you that ego death is just the beginning and it doesn't always happen. And it doesn't always occur the same way. And sometimes it's so vast and so large, you spend weeks on end meeting parts of yourself that died and then saying thank you to them for coming back to remind you that you experienced something real. Synchronicities that occur just magically, all of a sudden, someone that you heard about on the other side of the world saw their Facebook profile picture, then you had a trip, and then saw the kind of energy that they were bringing to the conference. You thought, man, I wanna go too. They're going, I'm going. I wanna meet this person. I wanna interact with this person. I wanna learn from this person. I wanna sit at their feet. You thought that. There's a reason why you thought that, because it's a quantum effect. Energy is not linear. Time is not linear. Time does not even exist. The reason why you perceive time is because it's a quantum construct in the human brain. We do self-inquiry exercises on 15 to 20 grams of mushrooms. At five gram dosages, what we experience is something that we call the impermeable zone. Something that is the threshold where you start to see visual acuities of objects. You start to see, okay, this stone has a rainbow aura. It's very beautiful, I'm going to approach the stone. But what you're actually not getting in the upper dimensional realms is when you go into the 15 and 20 gram dosages and you look at the stone, the stone uncloaks itself. It wasn't actually a stone. This whole time you thought it was a big rock sitting on a pedestal and then it starts moving and talking and, and communing with you. You are I, we are one type consciousness. It's very cohesive, it's very self-similar. So when you sit before it, it feels like it's sitting in front of itself because it's observing. It's observing everything that you're doing and then also reflecting on a fractal level everything that you think and creating reality with it. That's what happens when you sit before a stone at 15 grams. On five grams, you will see the, I guess you could say the exhaust flow of these magical events happening. You'll see the colors, you'll hear the sounds, you'll feel the energy, but you may not be able to interpret it until you get to say seven grams. And at seven grams, you'll start to see the ancient languages and ancient symbols starting to show up. You'll see Andinkra symbols on your arms. You'll see super symmetric symbols on the walls moving rapidly. You'll see golden symbols or, or purple symbols moving. The florals start moving. The, the, the walls are start moving in unison. You're like, oh, I'm about to start tripping. You know, when you look at that floor on that floor, mm, whoa, I'm gone. Then you lay back on your bed, you sit there and you're like, man, Ugh, I just, I just don't feel so good. Ugh, you know, I can't even walk anymore. I just gotta lay down. So you lay down, you close your eyes, and this kaleidoscope of information is assaulting you, and, and you're like, wow, you know, I'm just, gonna, I'm just gonna live in the moment. It's so beautiful. I don't know what this is, but it feels right. We've gotta expand and say, oh, you know what? I wonder what that is. There's an intelligence in the mushroom. It can't be the oldest entheogen and not have some intelligence. In indigenous societies, we call this a spirit. The Akashic records of the mushroom is incredibly vast because it's not from this planet. It's from off world. Spores can travel in the vacuum and the vortex of space and time. And when they are unlocked in the body, the undigestible chitin is absorbed by the human body and then read like a data chip. 
But until you actually speak to the plant medicine spirit, it's not going to speak back to you. So it's going to be like, okay, uh, oh, yeah. I'm going to press the eject button, woo, down through the multidimensional realms. And you're going to be like, man, that was an intense trip. I feel like I got sucked through a wormhole. Of course you did. Because you treated the mushroom like you were eating a candy cane. You're like, yeah, okay. I'm going to take this and I'm going to see something pretty. And the Native American church and the indigenous societies of the world, we call that disrespect at times. There's no such thing as disrespecting something that is older than time itself. You can't be disrespected, but you can disrespect yourself in the process if you're not careful. Which is why we have different rites and rituals of passage. You take the three, five, seven, and nine so that you can start talking to the mushroom. But a lot of people aren't speaking to the mushroom and saying, hey, you know, I'd like some self-inquiry. And the mushroom says, hey, well, uh, the reason you had a bad trip is because, you know, you're about to have kidney failure, that alcoholism is about to do you, and you probably should go get help for that. That's why you're always in pain on your left side every time you trip. And you're like, ah, it was just a bad trip. That didn't really happen. Then you end up admitted to the hospital six months later on kidney dialysis and wonder why. You gotta listen to these intelligences. They're here to help you. They are not people. They are older than all of us in this room and wiser and more vast and incredible and intricate than any human being who has walked this planet. Myself and my ancestors combined because these plant medicine intelligences were sent here for us from other planetary realms so that we could learn how to be again. But if you don't read the instruction manual, meaning you don't interface with the consciousness of the medicine, then it's just going to assault you with colors and images that don't make sense. But you can ask about them. Doing self-inquiry is very healthy because it helps us to learn more about ourselves. The mushroom, when it interfaces with the human body, gets to experience life as you. If you're unhappy, it's like, man, I'm just gonna be real with you. Man, it's looking pretty dark, you know? You just screamed at your girlfriend all night long, you broke a bottle on somebody's head. You know, you're reckless, the police are gonna get called. And then you get paranoid, you're like, oh, I better call the police on myself, oh my goodness. And that's because the mushroom was teaching you a lesson. The mushroom was saying, don't come to my altar without an offering. The mushroom was saying, do not approach to sit at my feet in a disrespectful way. A lot of these medicine spirits are older than time. Please control, uh, please uh, continue the, the slides. Thank you. I want to show you some examples. This face right here, you see half jaguar, half man? One of the first trips I called Baba Kalindi up in the middle of the night, it's 3 a.m. in the middle of the desert, 90 miles from civilization. And then I was growing mushrooms in the only place, the only state where it was quote unquote legal at that time to grow mushrooms, New Mexico. And I called him in the middle of the night and I said, Baba, you didn't talk about this part. And he said, what do you mean? His face holographed out of the phone. The entire man came up out of the phone. I'm sitting there staring, I'm like, oh, oh my goodness. I didn't expect that. Like, You're here? Uh, somehow in my mind, I thought that when we don't talk, when we talk to people on the phone, they're not in the same room as you, but they're actually in your consciousness and in your space and able to absorb a lot more information from you. The mushroom technology helps you to see stuff like that. So when you're scrolling to your Facebook feed and just think, ah, nah, man, you got it. you're stupid, you're this. You're still sending that energy to that person, they can hear you. Some of y'all been seen. Anyway. The technology of the mushroom is so profound such that you can interface with the intelligence of the animals that were evolving before they got to the human evolution. So you have gods and deities in the Shaven and Inca. This is a Moshe mask from Peru. The, there's a civilization called Cerro Norte that existed thousands of years around the time of the Olmecs. And they have all these jaguar masks everywhere. And anybody who's done martial arts on mushrooms knows that there's a point that you get to where you just don't feel quite average human anymore. You don't feel like that guy who's, I can't walk in the liquor store like this, man. Nah, not today. My things are out. Uh-uh. Not today. No. A lot of the animal archetypes that come from martial arts come from the mushrooms. So well, you see the mushroom cap over here. This is the somatic mushroom. This is the Ammonia muscaria, the Santa Claus mushroom, the Mario mushroom. And Baba taught us that in order 
to access these signatures, we had to take a dose that would get us here. You see this giant fang hanging out of his mouth? And then the open eye, the openness, signifying in Lakesh Alakin. And Lakesh Alakin is a realization that I discovered when I was in Mexico. I had always been saying it, I and I, one love. You are right, we are one. I get to Mexico. I'm greeted by myself again, but in the form of the descendants of the Mayans, who all became my friends when I lived in the mountains of San Jose del Pacifico. These are some of my best friends, but they don't consider 15 grams to be a dose at all. A lot of them will look at you and say, man, I had 200 peyote buttons the other day. Oh, that was a trip. Oh yeah, and I had salvia right before there, and then I took some blue fall berries, because they're following the indigenous guidelines that are embedded in their DNA code. So they don't go in with a state of fear. They go in and say, oh, you know, I gotta, I gotta talk to uh, my great, 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 who was also Moctezuma, and bring him forth so he can go handle and sort this thing out because, you know, I, I, I can't do it on my own. And they're just humble, you know? I went down there and I said, man, I did 20 grams of mushroom. They look at me like, eh, okay, you know? They hand me a giant trucker-sized cup with the finest apothecorum, fresh, you know that they're twice as strong as about 300 grams of fresh mushroom matter in that giant trucker sized cup coated in honey and lemon and they're just like man yeah oh yeah do you want seconds <laughs> and you're sitting there like wait wait what country am i what country am i in and because in the united states we're still really grappling at five but there's a reason for that you know because in those countries, a lot of the people who are taking those kind of dosages are the same ones growing their own food, are the same ones eating chapulinas every day, which is a national snack of Oaxaca. I give thanks for finally being brave enough to put a fried cricket in my mouth. You know that crickets uh, or grasshoppers, the indigenous grasshopper, I should say, or, or locust that, that is fried in Oaxaca, the reason why it changes its chirp when the temperature changes is because of serotonin. I started noticing small symptoms within myself. My first trip was seven grams. Before that, it was all microdoses. I was a teenager still in Houston. And when I was walking down the street, I just so happened to see a giant temple rise out of the ground. I looked at it, and I looked at my friend, and I said, was that always there? He was like, oh no, you're just tripping. And I'm like, what? what? What does that mean? He's like, oh, you're just, you're just having a trip. I'm like, you gave me, you gave me mushrooms, right? I didn't understand at that time that it was going to enhance my consciousness, so I just walked around normal. I walked, I walked into the museum, I handed out sage to the security guards, and said, here you go, brother. Yeah, and go ahead and hail that, you know, it's really good energy. You know, walked into the arboretum, looked at the butterflies on seven grams, and I was like, huh, I never noticed that before, that's new. Because I wasn't looking at things from a let's have fun sort of perspective. I was looking at things, they said, well, this will help you to heal. So I was like, well, I guess it'll help me sort my thoughts out. So I just kept working on my inner voice, trying to motivate myself. I took a different approach. Part of the reason I took a different approach is because I have Asperger's. I focus in on certain areas of consciousness and I like to extract them. I like to study something until I know it. I may be very slow. Some, some of y'all are my students and y'all know I don't answer emails very quickly. <laughs> But when it comes down to it, I had the idea to take what they called to be a social disorder and make it into a superpower. Because a lot of these social disorders were what shamans in Peru and Africa consider to be spiritual gifts. When you are living in the United States, you gotta realize you got a host of metaprogramming. You walk into Mexico uh, and to the, the, the village, here's what we were doing when you drove into town. Oh man, he's going to mama's house. Oh, baby, baby, go check on mama and baby. Yeah, man, that energy's coming through. Oh man, I can just feel it up here. We're 10,000 feet above you. Looking at the van coming into town with the amount of trauma and grief and sadness traveling on that bus and thinking, oh my goodness, got them mushrooms? Yeah, we got them mushrooms. Y'all just come in here to take a trip. Y'all think, okay, I'm just gonna have a fun time. I'm gonna see some beautiful things. That's beautiful and all. And that's a wonderful intention to have if you don't understand the sacred na nature. But like the great Maya Angelou said, once we know better, then let's do better. Baba helped us know better. 
he told us that these plants were very, very old. And that if you took them in the right dosage to access the esoteric knowledge and information, that you would see things that were very real that nobody else had seen before or hadn't been seen in thousands and thousands of years, thousands and thousands of lifetimes. Please continue. This is Ooh. what I took into my last trip Ooh. in front of Palantir. Ooh. This is technology. Ooh. Baba loved technology. I loved crystal technology from the moment I was born. When I was three years old, I had a rock collection that looked like a museum grade collection because I would go to people's garage sales and beg them out of their stones. You know, I'd sit around, I'd go in the rock shop, a little pickpocket. I was a bad little kid, but I, but I got the stone. I was like, that, that one's mine. Put it under my pillow at night, go dream and, and create astral universes and dimensions, open a doorway. I mean, I have a crush on that guy over there, okay. I'm gonna, I'm gonna make a door in my dream and now I'm gonna meet him at the spot. A lot of us were born doing some strange things, but nobody ever talked to us about it. And the indigenous tribes will take you aside and say, um, so you're gonna go over there and train with that shaman priest, because you can't live with us no more. We, we don't know what to do with you. That's what would happen. They would take you aside. The priesthood would abduct you and sit you in a chair and have you learn and do nothing but absorb and read sacred materials because you were the only one who came back as a keeper of the knowledge in your lineage. I'm the first daughter of the first daughter of the first daughter of my house. That means that the ancestral trauma or epigenetic trauma, 14 generations of epigenetic memory in every single cell in my body is accessible through the technology of the mushroom. It pulled a lot of things up out of me. It pulled my grandmother's uh, abuse that she received from her husband that manifested in me being a little bit untrustworthy of men that pulled together years of sexual abuse that happened in my family, that the mushroom showed me, that I had to go and encounter and realize the reason I had cancer growing on me at age 12 years old is because for the last seven generations, the women in my family have been abused. And then go in and talk to the ancestors and get them to stop crying, get them to stop grieving, get them to stop hurting inside because their hurt was hurting me too. And I couldn't explain why. We're going above a level of science here, my friends. We're pushing the boundaries on human evolution. Let me tell you, every single one of you here is no longer an archetypal human if you have gone above a 10 gram dose, or even a 7 gram dose, or even a 5 gram dose. The problem is, a lot of you don't know your own power yet. Get at him. Get at him. A lot of you think I can sit here and talk about Baba Kalindi because I have affection for him or I have respect for him as a man. No, I respect him as a divine being. And I actually took the time to eat 10 grams every time he gave a talk and then go to the places that he went and discuss those places with him. Sometimes when he was off the mark, the first time he brought me Yiming Zoo, I looked it up, I said, Baba, you selling glow in the dark crystals? Are you crazy? What's going to cause us all cancer? What's that bearing in mind? I ain't buying no Yiming Zoo. That was disrespectful. I was, I was a really hard student to get along with at times. Fraudulent. <laughs> exactly. But he said, you know, Acacia, this is the one. I was like, wait, what? He's like, yeah, this is the one that Wan Yin put in her mouth, you know, and, and her blood was still preserved in her veins. Here's the book. It's a book by Peter Andre. It's called Unraveling the Mystery of the Yiming Zoo. Different glowing stones that were used to decorate the ceilings but terracotta soldiers were in their time. And then also glowing stones that the Empress Guan Yin used. You've seen a dragon and a phoenix, right? Dragons holding that big old pearl like this, right? This is that pearl. I had to sit and watch Baba ask the people who are the seers and oracles to donate. I lost my car trying to donate. And I was honored and grateful to do it because I knew that this was a chance in thousands of lifetimes to actually meet the pearl of legend, to meet the infinite consciousness of legend on a consciousness to consciousness based form and ask it questions about things that happened billions of years before I was even thought about to have it peer and open its eye 
into my soul and show me who I really am the long way. How they've gone into battle with another reptilian type army and how they called forth the greatest healers of legend and history to go and reign on the earth in this time because the amount of pain would be exceedingly great. This stone will help you to bridge that masterpiece. There are other people in this room who volunteered to donate the money so that the community could use the stone, so that we could see things into the future and the past that could help us move along as a human species. On a scale of humanity, this stone is the most important thing here. I see y'all saying peace to each other. I ain't seen nobody say peace to the stone. Baba's legacy is real. The organic singularity is real, and you're living in it right now. And what I'm sharing with you, even though I'm not able to share specific details, the Yiming Zoo is a part of it. The transdimensional crystals are a part of it. I'm wearing Yiming Zoo. These stones have the ability to create hive mind consciousnesses. Raise your hand if you've ever been in the hive mind. Come on now. Don't even, don't even front. Okay. And you were able to receive messages from people thousands of miles away. You didn't even know that well, at least in this lifetime. And then make connections with those people and then go into your experiences with them and bring back information. Sometimes I go into the hyperdimensional village where Bob would be up there, I'd be like, hey, Baba, uh, you know, uh, so-and-so came back. Be like, yeah, man, the Yankees changed. Well, it's been about 2,000 years, and we'll see this time. Stuff like that, because we already knew who was coming into our circles by going into the elevator on 15 grams, going into the higher dimensional realm, so we would see why you came back here, what you came back to learn, and what kind of work to expect from you. I came back as one of the Acacias. I didn't choose this name. This name was part of the reason why I became a very depressed, suicidal teenager, and the mushroom had to help me not to take my own life. But the same mushroom showed me what my name really meant and how important it is that we treat the mushroom with respect and that we treat it as a healing modality, but also as a tool of expanding consciousness and gaining knowledge of self. The reason is, as time goes on, there are different cycles of human evolution and development. If you really think that things are gonna stay the same very long for the next 200,000 years, you're incorrect. It's been spoken about in ancient scriptures and literature. The esoteric part of working with the mushroom on the higher dimensional realms is Baba will always share with us warnings. Say, hey, you know, y'all should take my survivalist class, you know. We'll have a meteor hit. You know, we're overdue for Yellowstone to erupt. We're overdue for a meteorite to, to hit. And we're also overdue for an entire different age of consciousness. It's time for us now to carry the torch and to honor Baba in this organic singularity by coming together and becoming a cohesive unit. If I were to take apart the Palantir into the sum of its molecular parts, it would be a pile of sand. Useless. If I were to take apart a magnet before it's magnetized, useless. I cut a magnet once it's been magnetized, after it's, the ceramic is treated, and it becomes a thousand magnets. It's holographic. If I take a holograph and I take one pixel out of the holograph, that entire holograph is intact. The person's face that was on the hologram, you can see the whole person's face on the tiny little pixel. That's how consciousness behaves. If my transdimensional crystal break is holographic. It's self-similar. It's cohesive. We're starting to wake up and realize that we're not alone. We're starting to look at ourselves. We're starting to see ourselves. And do you have any clue how long we've been waiting for an opportunity to do just that. We've been waiting almost 200,000 years, guys. Time's up. We have the technology in our hands. Baba Kalindi made sure that we have the ancient of ancient technologies, Yiming Zoo stones, which were known to be able to create hive mind type simulations so that we could go and share information with each other and say, hey, you know, I saw this. Did you see this? Yep, the AI is doing this. Okay. Um, and then go and store the information because we can't be expected to remember a dimension of Brahman consciousness or of the hyperdimensional level where you don't exist anymore. You're just a face. And that face is in bliss. 
but that's what the Buddhists call moksha or nirvana. You know, these are ascended states, transcendental states that we're just saying, man, I had a good trip. You got there, now stay there. That's the challenge. Mm. Stay there by taking care of your body. Stay there by taking care of your mind. Stay there by taking care of your people. Stay there by taking care of yourself and stop projecting your negative opinions of yourself upon other people because that's all you and you know it. And you like to like the little emoji and the meme, but when it comes back to you, oh man, I don't want to take any responsibility. Take accountability for being a divine being. That's what Baba taught us. That's what it means to stand in your power. I take accountability for everything that I create and everybody that I attract into my life and attract into my circle. And I take accountability for the fact that Baba prepared us for this mission. And the mission's just beginning. He said the game has just begun. His legacy is not in the five gram dimensions. His legacy is in the 20, 30, 40 gram dimensions. And these dimensions are safe to access. Why? Because the ancients were doing it. That's what the ancients did. The ancients didn't take two grams and say, I saw smiley faces and pink elephants and call it a done day. No, they went to their great, 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 great grandfather's house, sat down, drank tea, yeah. felt good about themselves, and went into war the next day knowing the battle was already finished because they already beat the war in the hyperdimensional realms that manifest the next day. <laughs> The Yoruban warriors, I know I probably should wrap it up, but the Yoruban warriors, Baba, Baba was interviewed by a brother, I can't remember the brother's name, great Baba, and he was talking about words of power. When he introduced me in 2018 to the stage, I felt so bad because I missed my mark. I knew it. In 2018 he said, here's Acacia, meet Acacia, she's ancient. And I thought, Baba, wow, you really just said that about me, oh my God, I'm shaking, oh my God. I can't believe he introduced me as who I have introduced myself to in the upper dimensional realms. That's amazing. Okay, now pull it together, girl, and get out there. I just driven 40 miles from Arizona. I didn't know what to do. But when it came down to it, he was talking about words of power. What were the words of power that David spoke to the stone to kill Goliath? That's what he said when he introduced me. And I looked at that and I cried. I'm still trying to hold back tears. Because even though I know that he's in this room, and he's amongst all of us at this moment, materially, I'm still a bit selfish. But he went to the ancestral realm so he could be the most powerful ancestor that we all have to access. He sacrificed so that he could learn the information and give it back to you. Because some of y'all wouldn't let him teach. Some of y'all wouldn't learn. Some of y'all wouldn't even let him speak before he had something negative to say, and he knew it. So he came back in a form that we can all access, in a higher dimensional form, so that he can share the real information with you without dealing with the human attitudes. What are you gonna do if an ancestor tells you, well, you fucked up, you messed up. You need to start over. And then sends you back to the dimension where you start over from. You're gonna have to start over. But if he told you, hey, you know, you should treat this respectfully and you just shrug it off. You should take the higher doses because then you'll see what's actually going on in your life and you just shrug it off. You can't shrug this one off. You're gonna be tripping face to face with Baba. And then Baba can retrain you himself and show you what needs to be done because he is there to support each and every one of you. And he is powerful. And he is appreciative of the fact that we've all managed to come together and share in this opportunity. And I give thanks for the opportunity to be here to share the message that he shared with me, with all of you. So I give thanks. Real tough calling her. <laughs> we ain't gonna disrespect the family like that. You see them hands? How many hands is gonna go up? That questions and all that. It's real tough calling her little sister. I'm telling you. Anybody got a 
to go first. Peace, sister. Thank you so much for being here. My question is, when is your next class, the divine class, so that we can learn? September 1st, to help folks who want to learn the indigenous primordial methods of pulling back the sacred information and cross paralleling it with the systems of South Africa, with Zimbabwe, uh, with all the different places that a lot of the people in the multiverse have gone and studied to go find the information about the sacred plants, that with the, the trees of heaven, the rich fulfilling trees, the trees of no fear, the trees of no sorrow, how to use them as plants, like dieta plants, we are used with ayahuasca with the mushroom. Yeah, that class starts September 1st. Thank you, Andrew. How do we access, get, how do we get access to get into the class? Just go ahead and send me a message on Facebook. There's only like four spots left, though. Thank you. Absolutely. Good morning, thanks so much. I had a question. Um, is there a difference, like I know individuals when they take these trips, you're finding greater and greater aspects of yourself, but is there generally any difference between trips that like women would have and experience versus men? Yes and no. Remember how I said that there's like captains and generals that were appointed after we had gone to certain doses to share with the community? Sometimes you will have an experience as a singularity in and of itself. Well, you'll get to experience for all those people at the same time. Now, those are experiences that we haven't quite quantified yet. I'm still racking my brain trying to understand its true depth and meaning because those are the experiences that continue on even after your experience where people think, oh, I broke reality. Who can I trust anymore? Because the finger's pointing back at yourself. You've got to heal, but when you take on the role as a healer in your community, or even as a person who's going to share and give wisdom, oftentimes you absorb the signature of the people who are relying on you, and you have to be held accountable for that. So if they've wronged somebody or done you wrong or whatnot, you've got to forgive for everybody in your group and do the spiritual work for your community. And sometimes those trips are very difficult. Some of those trips last years. And I believe that Baba had had a couple of those encounters because the amount of respect that he gave me as some 20-year-old psychonaut on the other side of the world who he'd never even met before at that time was as if he was speaking to his own consciousness. And I know what that feels like because I'm doing it every day now. Thank you so much. Absolutely. Okay. Yes. <laughs> uh, my name is Gija from Grand Rapids, Michigan. Um, yeah, I'm trying to digest all of this. It's truth, truth, all the way truth. You said your power is in your voice. Yes. And your knowledge is in your voice. Yes. So does that mean when people speak and the knowledge of speaking, you're able to access the information that they have in their being? Yes. Okay. Absolutely, and, and just to expound on that, because that was amazing. Thank you for sharing that, Jim. I just want to expound on that for a moment because Baba did teach us about words of power that were used to fight. So if you said the Ofo, then somebody else, you say, okay, I'm going to wrap you up in fire. He gets wrapped up in fire in the spiritual realm. Uh, okay, uh, you're, you're going to get turned upside down. He gets disoriented in the spiritual realm. The words of power, when they are spoken with the right intention and the right manifestation takes place, can serve as educational tools as well. A lot of the times, I didn't understand what Baba was talking about after he spoke, so I'd go and take 10 grams and then trip on it. I'd be like, okay, so what did you see, Baba? Oh, that's what you saw. Oh, my goodness. And then the amount of information, one thought form he had was like an entire multiverse. One word he said was like an entire book. And to decode the depth of meaning in that one book, you had to take 15 grams. Then you didn't have enough time left. By the time you got to the end of it, you're like, man, I only got through three sentences. I guess, well, it's, it's the truth. But that is the power that we possess within our bodies that the mushroom pulls out of us to be observed. And a lot of us just don't know how to make the bridge between the scientific and the spiritual. That's why I wanted to let you guys know that a lot of these ancient texts, when they're talking about Krishna and the Buddha and the pure lands and realms and dimensions of existence, they're talking about things they saw on mushrooms. And you can use those things to help you map out where you're going. A lot of what you're drawn to, a lot of the sacred esoteric scripts I know a lot of you read are your very own stories. Some of you help with writing them. 
So I want you guys to keep that in mind and inquire with the mushroom because you never have to take my word for it. If you took five grams tonight and asked about words of power in the mushroom and you approached the mushroom with respect and honor, you're going to have a good trip tonight. Okay? Because it's going to show you everything that you've said and the meaning of your words. And if there's emptiness in your voice, it's going to really show. Give thanks. My name is Dion Russell and I'm from Miami, Florida. I have one question about the mouthpiece you had on the other day. Could you elaborate on that mouthpiece? Yes. Speaking of words of power, without a word, I want to hear about that mouthpiece. So I was wearing and I decided to be silly. Um, I ended up giving a mouthpiece away to a beautiful lady. I don't know if she's in the room or who's expecting. But it was a, a, a Mexican rattle. I got it in Oaxaca City. Um, a lot of the time I spent in Oaxaca, I was trying to get to know the indigenous rites and rituals of sacred mushroom use in San Jose uh, del Pacifico specifically. So I made friends with the lineage of Maria Sabina there who lived there. I made friends with the Zapotec guardians of the land. I made friends with their ancestors and whatnot. But moreover, I made friends with their musical system. There's a certain kind of dance that requires you to wear these nutshells on your feet and on your, your hands. And my, my grandfather, uh, being connected uh, to the house of Akan in Ghana, uh, we have dances, warrior dances. We have women's dances in the Yoruba Ifa system. We have Orisha dance, and I am a very big fan of Orisha dance. So when it came down to activating the intelligence that was within my own form, I took to making music for the ancestors with my, with my body and with, with my, my wristlets that were shells. These shells have a certain kind of sound that the ancestors know what it means when it clicks one way and it clicks another way. When you, when you shake it and it makes a high pitch, that's a word. When you shake it and make it a low pitch, that's another word. So when you're speaking and you're speaking your truth in your dance, you don't have to say word. Your movement is your truth. Your movement and your sound is the glory to the ancestors. It's your gratitude, it's your thanks, it's your excitement. You don't even have to open your mouth to speak to receive the blessings from it. And I had it on, on, my, on my mouth because the intention that I set for months leading up to this, not knowing if I was going to be able to attend this conference, was that I wish that I can re-inspire at least one of you, maybe not all of you, to go in and take the higher level dosages because that's really where Baba's passion was at. And I know that it wouldn't be right if we just left it at five grams. Because if you knew Baba and you were a friend of Baba, Baba didn't talk about five grams much. He said, talk to me when you get to 15. He wouldn't even talk to you before that. Some of the time. As the years went on, if you had an experience that was profound on say 10 grams or seven grams or five grams, he listened to your trip intently, but the cryptic tense about reality, those stories he would tell, you would reserve for the people in the village who would go and take the story and turn the story into entire dimensions of consciousness. So I give thanks. Any more questions? questions? How you doing? How you doing? I enjoy That's my teacher. I took an online class with a lot of people here. I just want to point out I had experience with five grams last night, my first time. And it was exactly like she said. Exactly like she said. I'm still enjoying it right now. I just wanted to kind of share that. She's a great teacher. And I'm going to Oaxaca with her. So raising funds for the Oaxaca trip. By the way, side note, if anyone would like to donate to the Native American church, Turtle Island Church, those are the indigenous rites and rituals I'm talking about as far as respecting the, the mushroom, the seven grandfather teachings of wisdom, respect, and kindness, and gratitude, okay? These seven grandfather teachings comprise a constitution. 
The constitution of which you agreed to gives you the right to, uh, to work with the medicine safely. There's an entire website, there's lots of information if you'd like to learn more or donate to the church so that they can get a new ID card printer. Um, there will be a cup in the other room for you guys to do that, as well as more information about the Native American church and training uh, with other quadernos from other places. Okay. Any more questions? Hey, peace. I'm yes. Steve. Hey. About 15 minutes away. Uh, it's a rumor you did 25 grams in front of the stone. Is that true? Could you just kind of explain? I did 21. It? Oh, you did? Okay. Mm -hmm. That's good. Yeah, just uh, keep going to that a little bit. Just yeah, of course. Me. What happened? I almost shit myself when the stone uncloaked itself. So I talked about it uncloaking itself because I, just like any one of you, looked at it like, wow, man, that was expensive. But is that the one bobble? Like really, I mean, it just ain't the one, I'm be so sad. That was the one. That my little ounce of faith was just enough. Because when I sat before this stone, I took this piece of technology with me. This is Sanaya Lahi. And I stopped for Allah. These are poetry written by the Hasai, the uh, Sheik Amadou Bamba wrote the poetry, that are words of power that are believed to not be translatable, some of them. Some of them are written in a crystalline language, so I thought what better way to find out what they really mean than to take them to the master crystal and have it tell me. When I opened up the crystal, uh, the first thing I asked was, where's Baba? I was looking for Baba and Ansar greeted me. But Ansar's voice and his demeanor, he was the triple thick darkness, but he was also very green. I said, well, I know Baba's in you. He said, yes, I'll go get Baba. And Baba, as the ancestor Baba, appears, first as a lion and then as a man. And he speaks, but he speaks through the telepathy. I didn't have to open my mouth. And I said, Baba, all right. He said, going up. I was like, okay, I got enough in me. He said, okay, all right, put down your liquor stick. Let's go up. So I went up and it was like I was traveling through space and time into the upper dimensional realms and I finally ended up in like a living room space. But not your everyday living room space. Like the kind of living room space that's made of lapis lazuli. The kind of living room space that has walls of pure gold. The kind of living room space that's got ancient technology and future technology where I can interface with the stone from right here. Because the technology that he gave me was lenses, new lenses for my eyes, so I can see into the soul. He also showed me that we've already taken over the artificial intelligence because it was using the crystal frequencies to try and increase its knowledge, and the crystal said no. The crystals would not allow stone nation, as we say in the Peyote Way Church, stone nation is a nation of spirits that are attached to the stones throughout time and space. You see the Moai, with, and you see the Easter Island stones. These stones are alive, the Olmec heads. Those stones are alive, okay? This stone is alive too. And when this stone wakes up, and particularly, it allows you to unlock every synchronicity that you've experienced real time to a point of 20,000, 40,000, 50,000 years in the future as far as what technologies will come out of the work that you do in front of the stone. Disciplining your thoughts is the first thing that I thought to, wow, if I hadn't been working with this tiny little thing for the last three years, then would I even be ready to stand before this stone? Because I remember I was thinking some you know, disrespectful things at first when I started working with crystals and I thought it couldn't hear me. It was just observing me the whole time. It didn't speak on what it heard, but it let me know in the upper dimensional realms that I had work to do on my attitude, my stubbornness, my forgetfulness, was an entity and a parasite in my gut. Things like that, that it just left out until I was ready. So if you sit before this stone, know this. This is the Dragon Ball that's in the great game of the universe. When you interact with other universes, this is our team's seeing stone for Earth. Think about that for a moment. This is our universal apparatus to contact and work with other extraterrestrial civilizations on a scale of universes. 
Does that answer your question, Steve? Yeah. Okay. Uh, bless up. My name is Ankara Akiru. Bless. Hey. Hey. I'm from uh, Team Zodiac uh, Virgo Leo. And uh, I actually have a question about the uh, ancient future technology that you're holding in your hand there. The, yes. Uh, Crystal Synergy on. Yes. It's the only one that I have ever made with the Yiming Zhu. And I'm very curious about um, how you are using that technology in your journey. And maybe if you can share you know, a little bit of insight of what you have experienced with the, uh, with the Crystal Synergy on. Oaxaca 2019 crew, raise your hands. I have witnesses. Mama, remember that time uh, somebody in ceremony decided to say some things to the elders? Remember that time? Remember when they were, we were interdimensionally attacked by beings who were very bitter and very strong? Yes. And remember what our defense was, Mama Coleman, I wish she was here. Mama Coleman's at a family reunion right now. But Mama Coleman ordered me, lift your onk. She told me to lift my onk. I was like, Mama, what, are you doing? what am I doing? She said, now focus its energy. I focused its energy. And a stream of purple light composed of loving high vibrational consciousness that was stored in the Yiming Zoo poured out. And it bound the individual up who was releasing demonic entities into our sacred space. Baba was there. Baba was walking around the space when the Ankh first activated in Karta. And he looks down at the Ankh and he marveled at it. Because the Ankh is a symbol of life. But the Ankh is also an ancient technology that has different crystal codes that you have so graciously shared with all of us here in your work, in your research, Ankara, you are an original Ankara, which means that from ancient Kemet, the pharaohs would go to someone like yourself, uh, an Arcturian, is that correct? Who was a master synergist of crystal harmonic frequencies to create objects of power that could win entire wars. The Ankh is extremely powerful, Ankara, but not necessarily even because of the Yiming Zoo. The Yiming Zhu is a feature. The actual structure of the Ankh itself is able to transcend and open portals within human flesh with the assistance of the Yiming Zhu, pull out negative energy and imbue it with light from the Buddha realms or the Pure Lands or the Wakanda realms, if you know what I'm talking about. The purple realms with the ancestors sitting on trees like jaguars and bliss. Yeah, well, that's also the Buddha realms. Sorry, burst your bubble. But that's where the light comes from. So. I hope that answers the question. Thanks. I appreciate you, brother. Thank you so much for your work. I appreciate you every day. Good thing. Greetings, sis. My name is Ross Naeem. We hail from Columbia, South Carolina. Peace. By way of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, still city representing. We represent the Capricorn Nation Earth Keepers. And we wonder, two questions, two part questions. We understand that we can use our personal crystals and stones as downloadable devices and technology. So, um, two-part question. How can we approach this ancient sacred relic in an, uh, a respectful and appropriate way with our personal crystals Train. to download? Train on 15 grams with your personal crystal first. Because the personal for crystal is going to send you to the mirrorverse so that you can work out the bugs in your own consciousness. Meaning parasites, different entities, different uh, creatures and whatnot that reside in your consciousness to confuse and distract you from your overall role in this work. Work with a personal crystal first. Okay? Work with a crystal old enough to have observed. Maybe a crystal from Brazil. If you have a Baba's transdimensional crystal, you know what to do. Activate it. I see. Okay. And then once you've activated it and you've trained for about a year, then work your way up to 20 gram dosages, and then you'll understand through context and experience what it means to see into a stone, into every crack and crevice, and how the rainbow colors of the stone will open up, and it will unveil its true face. And the true face of that stone has trillions of data points that you can use like an extra dimensional keyboard to travel and transverse through time, space, and galactic 
spaces. Ashe. 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 So that answers my second question, because I, I, I feel that um, there is a formality before we should approach such a relic with our personal stones yes. to, to transfer information and do dialogue. So, so thank you for that. Ask permission from the stone. And you shouldn't have to even bring it near it. It should be a, a light wave transmission. And I give thanks for you, Palantir. The consciousness of the Palantir has been here observing this event. At first, it was a little shaken up. Hasn't been in front of so many souls before. But the Palantir is very excited to meet each and every one of you. I'm very grateful to be a part of this vibrant community and give thanks. Okay, okay sir. Real quick. Real quick. Peace, fire water. Peace. Scorpio. Peace. Acacia, will you please explain about going into the Akashic Records storehouses armed and why and how to locate weaponry? Yes, this is General Firewater. Give a round of applause for General Firewater. He is one of the interdimensional team's members that I communed with after speaking with Baba for hours on the phone. What he's referring to is a specific experience that I had when I was attacked in the Akashic Records. I ended up taking about 16 grams and seeing a bunch of books that were made of etheric material, holographic books. So as I touched one of the books, I realized that it was a story of every lifetime I've ever lived. But not only that, the story of every other lifetime, of every other being that's lived in my spiritual house. Some of which, though those people who I saw are in this very room. I saw you before you ever knew I existed in this reality. And when I was up there, there were different entities and different creatures and whatnot that didn't want you to get the knowledge. You had to fight the guardians of the Akashic Records to come out with the books. Otherwise, you'd be struck with the disease of forgetfulness if you could not combat. So this giant sea monster looking thing that looks like it's from Pokemon with tentacles in its head first attacks my partner, who's also guarding my space, and then attacks me. So then I have to pull out my martial arts that I have brought back from the multiverse already to go and decapitate it and then remove the tentacles from my partner's brain. Those are some of the encounters that you can have on the mushroom. When you go into the Akashic Records and you go into these sacred spaces, there are sometimes entities that will try to prevent you or distract you on your journey there because they understand the gravity of the work that you will do. You may not understand how important it is. Right at that moment, it's a trip but it knows and it will try to take away your power. So that's where sovereignty and understanding as a divine being, you're the baddest thing up there. You're God. There's nothing that you should fear. There's nothing that you should bow down to. There's nothing that you should grovel at. There's nothing that you should run away from screaming. It's hi, hello. And do we, do we have an issue? We're good? Okay. Peace and blessings to you too. To every th being I meet, no matter how scary looking, no matter how ugly, no matter how convoluted or deranged, because I recognize what is composed of is also a part of my consciousness. And I respect that above the experience of meeting something that might traditionally scare the socks off somebody. Does that answer the question, Firewater? Locating interdimensional weapons. There's different dimensions that you can access, all right? Some of these dimensions, Baba call it, the planet of the drums really does exist. Uh, the planet of music really does exist. Now, the transdimensional crystals are great gatekeepers because they get, you, they, they get you straight before you go up there and make a fool of yourself. Because you can't just go into the weapons artillery room, disrespectful and uncouth. You won't even know what anybody else is talking about until you ask your crystal, why can't I access this place? And I'll show you, forgive everyone and you shall be forgiven. It'll show you patience is key compassion and honesty and respect. And until you learn to control your temper, you are not permitted in the artillery. You are not permitted to take weapons that are etheric and download them into your Yiming Zoo and then recreate them and 3D print them on the spot in another dimension after your trip and for eternity because they're the weapons you came here with. But you yourself put the encryption lock on what you could and could not access. So until you meet your own encryption lock and bust it open by honoring yourself, you won't be able to go nowhere or do nothing. Does that answer the question? Absolutely. I get that.
Can I ask Acacia a question? You mind if we make history? Do you mind if we make history? It's a yes or no question. Yes or no. Yes. You, you cool with that? Yes. So everybody who has a Yi Ming Zhu, come on stage. Right now. Watch this. So if you have a Yi Ming Zhu, come to the stage. Now, in history, the Yi Ming Zhu's, this is the only part little sis left out. You could only get it as, the, as an emperor of China. You couldn't even get it as a common person. Just come on up, everybody come on up who got a Yi Ming Zhu, come up on both sides of the stage. When the Yi Ming Zhu, when the emperor died, when they were preparing his body, they took the Yi Ming Zhu and put it in his mouth. The Yi Ming Zhu that people have, have been following them their entire incarnation cycle. And it's always available for you to use even before you have one. You can go see what it looks like just by taking 15 dry grams. And so... It is you. When she said, yo, it's time for like, we're 200,000 years behind where we're supposed to be at in consciousness. There has never been a generation where the Yi Ming Zhu was outside of Asia. The words never. Look at, look at your neighbor and say never. But now what? I ain't gonna look behind me because I am way too emotional right now. You should take your cameras out. This is history. This is what you should be shooting right here. Where your Jedi's at. Now you can't just get a Yi Ming Zhu and be like, oh, now I'm a Jedi. Because the Yi Ming Zhu will take you the other way if you're disrespectful. And on top of that, they put you through a lot of rites of passage, some of which I'm sure people here are going through right now. But these rites of passage make us stronger. They make us kinder. They make us worthy of being holders of a Yi Ming Zhu and worthy of being considered human and conscious and members of our community. Ramosu. This bothers me and you. I It's history. That's the power. You understand that? That's, that? that's what this is right here. When we say collectively take this back home with you, you draw from this. You draw is is lineage, it's family tying in, it's Tamarian. When he was being called weird, his Yi Ming was underneath his shirt. He wasn't talking about it. Some people was like, oh man, hold my Yi Ming Zhu for me. Just can, can you hold one of the glowing stones? Wait, wait, can you hold it for me? Also, things that you say, but in private, some of us have access to hear all things that are said behind closed doors from all of the Yi Ming Zhu, and we can hear very clearly. And we must keep that information very close to our hearts and use it to work on ourselves rather than to do anything else with it. But that's very important. If someone's called weird, and then we, tar we see that person as a negative individual, uh, then we will try to send that person healing energy, even though it may be difficult sometimes. And we will go as far as it will take to find a way to heal that individual in our community so we can call him, he or she, brother and sister again. So we can heal a part of our mind that is embedded in that person who called one of our own weird or strange or ugly or whatever. Baba had Yi Ming Zhu at the first psychedelic conference and people was like, nah, I'm good. Like Acacia said, ah! I'm straight, I'm straight, I'm straight, I'm straight, I'm straight. So now when you see all this up on stage, you be like, hey, I need to get me one of those. I didn't get mine until last year. That means for four or five years it sat there and nobody could obtain it until I came for it. Everybody on here has a story about the Yi Ming Zhu. Somebody had a Yi Ming Zhu and they was like, ah, I cannot believe I just lost it. They want the right one for them. They had to get the, they had to get the right one. It's not on a vending table. It's not a crystal you can just get up here and just touch. All right? It's waiting on you. You don't have to rush and tell nobody to hold it for you. The one, 
Yeah, Kalinde was holding it, but now Ramazu was holding it because it's his time to hold it. It's been chasing him too. He can't outrun it. You can't outrun yours. You don't really have to chase it. You didn't do the inner work, self-discovery, and then connect, connect. This is the transdimensional. This is the supercomputer that's connected at room temperature. Never. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this. You're looking at a hyperdimensional village. You've all helped each other. I don't know how many times you've helped me, Ankara. I don't know how many times. Tell us you've inspired me. Firewater, you've always listened to me. Mama Ayana, you've always helped me to see myself deeper and understand. Sincere, you taught me to stop being afraid of myself. Ed, you taught me what it meant to be still. Abina, you taught me that it's okay to just tell it like it is. Akenke, you are the most inspiring individual I met. You taught me from the very get-go when I saw your uh, vlogs. Uh, I'm sorry if I speak about that, but what I'm saying is, you taught me self-love from the very get-go. Soki, I venerate you highly, and I give thanks for you. Tim, thank you for being. Tim, Tim is a master mycologist too. You know, Am Sue, I remember our first trip, North Carolina. Samuel, Huston, I, I give thanks for you, brother. Like, your name is so profound. I'm, I'm sorry I speak your name, but you are an amazing being, and this is the reason, one of the reasons, I helped uh, get off the sacred mountain in Oaxaca. He supported my work before anybody else did. And I think that's everybody I know by name, other than, other than the folks at the very end, but almost all of us have had experiences with each other directly through the evening zoo magic, and we really give thanks for an opportunity to hold such sacred stones and be keepers and guardians of such ancient secrets and share them with one another and share them with a group of folks. We're family. Don't mean family doesn't always like each other, but we love each other and we ride for each other in the multiverse. We always have. I think that's it. Thank y'all. Appreciate y'all. Yeah. I'll give it up for Acacia. Make some noise. Make some noise, make some noise.